Gradients and their use is becoming more and more popular, especially in comic book artwork. What I'm going to do is show you how to use gradients to do just that. You can also use gradients in regular photography to add effects such as fog and haze to an image. So let me go ahead and show you how to add some gradients, for example, in this jaw strap of this character. Now earlier in Illustrator, I created this gradient from this light to dark color to give this visor some depth. All right, I'm going to create a brand new layer. And I'm going to draw the gradient on here. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go to this layer here with the character and I'll grab the magic wand tool and I'll click on the visor area or the jaw strap and I'm going to go to this layer here. The cool thing about selections is they don't really care where you draw your artwork as long as you make a selection somewhere. So what I'm going to do is with the eyedropper I'm going to sample this gray. Then I'm going to click in this swatch and I'm going to make that gray pretty light like so. I'm also going to press X on my keyboard to then color the background. I'm going to make that one pretty dark like so. So we have this light to dark gray. Then I'm going to click on my gradient tool and I'm going to show you that we can go and click on this pop-up to choose the gradient type. As you can see on this first swatch we're going from the foreground to the background color which would be these two chips. We could also choose to go from the foreground to transparent which I'm not going to do here. And there's so many others to choose from. I'm also going to show you how to make your own gradient in a moment. So what I'm going to do is with my gradient tool selected as you see here I'm going to click and drag inside this jaw strap and now we have this nice gradient that goes from dark to light. Now the cool thing about a gradient is that you can continue to work with it and apply it in the same area until you're happy. So I'll try over here now. I'll click outside and drag out this line. And I'll click closer in the middle and drag this way. So as you can see I can modify this gradient all day long until I get something that makes me happy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go this way and let go right there. I'll press command or control H to hide the selection and I like that a lot. So I'm going to press command and control D to deselect. Don't forget I created that gradient on its own layer so I can turn it off and on. Now that we know how a gradient works let me tell you how to make your own custom gradient. Well earlier I showed you how to click here on this little arrow to open up these different swatches. To get to the gradient controls we click in the middle right here in this bar. Now we're in the gradient editor. Here are the presets that were in this drop down. But now what we can do is make our own. These guys down here, these little things are called stops. And if I click along the bottom of this bar and I double click on any of these stops, I can change the color that's going to be in that stop. So I can also click on a stop, hold my mouse down, and drag it, and even swap the locations like so. The little diamonds here will determine how tight that gradient is going to be or how loose in between two stops. So when I drag it all the way to the left, I get a nice hard line. When I go back to the middle, a nice transition. I can also change the gradient type from solid to noise and I can also adjust the smoothness. I'm going to click save and call it something in a moment. I'll wait for the dialog box to appear. It's going to go in the gradients folder, inside the presets folder, inside your Adobe Photoshop CS4 folder. And I'll call it test. And I'll go ahead and save that. And now I have my own custom gradient. Now what I can do by the way is I'll go ahead and cancel that for now and show you that we can also modify the gradient type as we work. So we can use a linear gradient, radial, and these other ones up here as well. You can also affect the transparency and the opacity with these guys here. And you can also reverse it, dither it, and change the mode. And that's pretty much how you work with gradients in Photoshop.